Smartsheet does not have parent-child relationships in reports out of the box, but with a few tweaks to our sheets, we can get something that's really close on our reports. Let's go. So I've set up three different reports for us to look at and one sheet that we're gonna use for our base data. So let's take a look at the sheet first. This is our parent-child sheet. You can see that this is just a standard uh, project task list sheet, a project plan. And we're gonna focus on three columns for this video. The first column is a task name column. The second is a status. And the third is the start date. So what we wanna see are any tasks that are behind schedule. In other words, they're overdue. The status has not started and the start date is in the past. That's just what we wanna focus on just for this video. You can customize what I'm about to show you in any way you want for your reports. So if we take a look at a standard Smartsheet report that has standard filters on it, the two filters that we have are the start dates in the past and the status is not started. So when those two things are true, it's gonna show those items on our report. But you can see here that this report has two activity threes with two different start dates. So standard out of the box, this doesn't give us enough context to make any decisions off of this data or to really understand what we're looking at from our report. So I'm gonna show you a report that I built that has a column formula in the sheet that elevates a little bit more data to our report. So now at least we have the project name, this section of the project here, the phase that we're in, the task that we're in that's behind schedule, the second phase that we're in with those two tasks that are behind schedule. So now at least we can see that our two activity threes that have not started and are behind schedule because the start dates in the past, we can see at least contextually where they live in our project plan. If we go back to our sheet, there's a hidden column over here that I created that's called overdue. Now this column is a checkbox column and it has a, a civil formula in it where we're counting, we're, we're determining first whether the row that we're on is a parent row or not. If it is a parent row, then we want to count how many of its children have start dates that are in the past and have statuses equal to not started. If we're on a parent row that has children that fit that scenario, then it checks the box. If we're not on a parent row, in other words, if we're on a child row, then it's also going to check, do those same two checks and it's going to check those boxes as well. So what you see here is while this child is checked on because it's not started and it's in the past, it also checks on its phase. It also checks on this section and it also checks on the highest level project as well because these guys are all in the same hierarchy. And then we have the same hold true down here at the bottom. So these two guys are not started. They're in the past. They're part of phase two. They're part of execution. They're part of the project, the high level project. So the formula that I just showed you, I'll drop it down in the description of this video. So you can just copy it out of there and put it in your own sheet if you want to use this. All right. So that gets us to this point in our report, but I think there's some more steps that we can put in. There's, there's a, some additional functionality that'll make this a little bit clearer as to what we're looking at on our report. And the way we do that is we can build a report that looks like this. So this report, we show that execution has tasks underneath it. We show that phase one also has tasks underneath it with these little icons. And then we have the bottom row of activities, which are our tasks, uh, indicated by these three dashes. So these, di these dashes and these icons are dynamic based off of the hierarchical level of where they are in our task list. So for instance, if we have a task list that's at this section, planning and execution, they're gonna have one icon. And then if we have a phase underneath that, they're gonna have that second icon, which is that diagonal arrow. And then if they live at the very bottom of the hierarchy and they have no children, then they're gonna have those three dashes that kind of push them out. So this helps us to identify, and the color coding helps to identify it as well, how far down in the hierarchy we are. So let me show you how this works in the sheet. So I'm gonna unhide my two columns here. So I built two additional columns in addition to our overview column. The first one is the level column. So the level also has a column formula in it as well. 
And this column formula helps us determine at what level we are in the hierarchy or at what level the, the current row is in the hierarchy. So the first thing it looks for is how many ancestors does the current row have? If the current row has ancestors, then it's going to count them and it's going to put them in that in that level column. So you can see at the top, zero is at the very top because this guy has no ancestors. That's as high in the hierarchy as you can get. Planning, execution, monitoring, they all have one ancestor, which is this, this project hierarchy ancestor at the very top. And then we get to count, um, we count the number of children in the task name at the row. If it's greater than zero, then we add a plus. So what this does is this tells us that even though I'm on the second level of a hierarchy, if I have children, then I need to know that. I need to identify that by my level number. So if you can see, here is an example. So this closing activity is actually level two of the hierarchy, but it has no children, so it doesn't have a plus. So you can see level two is also not color coded gray using our conditional formats. So level two is actually the lowest level of that node of the hierarchy. All right, so that's the level column. The next one we're gonna look at is a task name hierarchy. So all this one does is it looks at the level and it says, okay, what level are you? And based off of the level that you are on the current row, then I'm gonna give you some formatting prior to printing the task name in the report. So if we jump back over to this report, we can see like the execution has this down arrow and the phase one and phase two have this diagonal down arrow. So let's jump back over to the sheet. So this one says, if the level contains zero, then just show me the task name. Whatever's in this task name column, that's what I wanna see. But if it's not zero and it is a one, if it contains one, then show this down arrow prior to showing the task name, which is what we see here. If it's not level one, let's check to see if it's level two plus. If it is level two plus, then that means it's not only a level two hierarchy, but it also has children underneath it. So we need to show this icon here in addition to the task name. If it's not level two plus, let's check to see if it's level two. If it is level two, we're gonna put in these two dashes and then show the task name. And then let's check to see if it's level three. If it is level three, we're just gonna put in the three dashes and the task name. So again, I'll include these formulas in the, in the description below. Uh, that way you guys can just copy and paste and use them in your own projects. So I think that's about as close as we're gonna get to creating parent-child relationships in reports in Smartsheet. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the functionality of the click to expand or collapse like we do in Sheets, but I think that's something that we can live without for now until they put that on the development list. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. It helps other people find the video. If you like the content, hit the subscribe button. I've got more videos coming out with tips just like these. And finally, if you have somebody on your team that's also working in Smartsheet that might wanna see this, click the share button or copy the, link, the URL at the top and email it to them. We'll see you next time.